What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be explaining to you guys uh, the beat up justified strategy. And the main reason I'm explaining it is because I've noticed a lot of people complaining like, oh I'm losing to beat up justified Terrakion, it's extremely difficult to beat. And I feel like a lot of the a lot of the stress of facing beat up justified teams uh, is just not being prepared for it or not exactly knowing um, what their weak points are, how to deal with them, and I feel like this video would just be helpful for you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and be putting this out for you. Uh, this is a little bit off the cuff, but I will be explaining uh, what beat up justified teams are, who the most notorious Pokemon on, the, on these teams are, how to beat them, and just general tips for facing them. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more Pokemon content, and let's shoot for 150. And also, guys, you gave me a lot of good song and movie recommendations, or a lot of good song and TV show recommendations. If you want to recommend me a movie today, I'm going to be having a nice day where I just fold some laundry and relax, and a movie would be a nice thing to watch while I do it. So go ahead and comment it if you want to. And yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Shout out to an untitled folder for allowing me to use their meme in my thumbnail. Uh, they're on Twitch as well as Twitter, and they, those will both be linked in the description down below. And also shout out to Mr. Legitimacy for allowing me to use his beats in this video. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to be starting off by explaining the Pokemon with the ability justified, the beat up Pokemon, Pokemon that do very well versus justified beat up teams, and some redirection options to help you stop them from even getting going. So let's start off with the justified Pokemon. The most notorious of these is going to be Terrakion because of its high speed. Typically a Terrakion is going to be running Jolly, Max Speed, Max Attack, a Life Orb, uh, and that's just because it's it's really easy just to slap onto a team, uh, and it's a very threatening Dynamax user. If you're facing one of these, uh, their typical moveset will be something like Rock Slide, Close Combat, either Iron Head or like Poison Jab, uh, Protect with this uh, spread. And the reason being is um, with the ability Justified, if you run it next to something like Whimsicott, I guess I should have explained that first. <laughs> uh, Arcanine next to Whimsicott is very threatening because turn one, this Terrakion can... <laughs> I, kept, I said Arcanine. Uh, this Terrakion can click Protect uh, while the Whimsicott goes for a Tailwind and goes down to its Focus Sash. And then the following turn, because there's a pretty unlikely chance that you're going to be outspeeding both these Pokemon, uh, Terrakion will get beat up by the Whimsicott, which hits four times, giving it plus four attack because of its ability. And it's able to use plus four stab rock slide coming off of a life orb, which is extremely threatening, uh, if not dynamaxing and spamming things like max knuckle or max rockfall to pick up KOs. It's a really threatening Pokemon. It essentially gets two weakness policy boosts from beat up. Uh, so if you've ever faced something like weakness policy Rhyperior uh, under Trick Room, this is essentially the uh, logical equivalent of that under Tailwind, which is really scary. So yeah, uh, Terrakion I believe is the best option if you want to run it, uh, just because it has access to a stab move that hits both Pokemon has a chance to flinch, and because it has the highest attack stat out of all these options, as well as the highest speed. Uh, well, it ties for speed with these two, but when you account for the attack stat, it's it's just a lot better. Cobalion, uh, not quite as threatening. It would be run in a similar manner with the Life Orb, Jolly Nature, uh, and this moveset. However, I, I find it much less threatening because it has only 90 base attack and doesn't have access to Rock Slide, and yeah, that just kind of that just kind of like digs it a hole. Like it, it's it's okay. Maybe if you already have a Rock type or a, something, you could uh, justify <laughs> no pun intended justify using a Cobalion over it. And I know some people have decided to use Cobalion just because it's really nice uh, to have a powerful Steel type that helps you deal with Togekiss. But at the same time, Terrakion does that so. Next up we have Virizion, uh, one of the bulkier ones, especially defensive, and I find this to be the least <laughs> the least threatening of all of these because it's kind of frail on the physical side, like you have a lot of options for beating it with that. Um, if you have any decent flying type it just drops because it's both grass and fighting type, like if you have a talent flame, this thing's already gone, they're not going to be able to get a beat up justified boost. <laughs> uh, but they typically run the same spread, but they're running Leaf Blade, Close Combat, Poison Jab, or not Poison Jab, um, whatever coverage move they would run. This one isn't common, which is why I don't want to really talk about it. I suppose they could run Balance. Balance would be scary. I don't even know if it gets that, though. Uh, and Protect. This one is uncommon. You probably won't have to deal with that, but that would be what it would probably run since it would get Stab Max, or since it would get uh, Max Airstream uh, to boost its speed. So that, that's like all it's really got. Arcanine is actually a really interesting one. Uh, you saw a lot of Arcanine Whimsicott beat-up strategies in early VGC 2020 because these three were not released yet. Uh, and also... It has really good coverage. It has access to moves like Wild Charge, Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Play Rough, Crunch, Fire Fang, well I guess it wouldn't use Fire Fang, uh, Outrage, Psychic Fang, so it has all these different moves that are really, really useful. Uh, and the only downside to it is Arcanine is, well actually no, I guess it's an upside. 
Arcanine, you can see an Arcanine and a Whimsicott on the same team and not immediately jump to the conclusion that that Whimsicott is packing beat up and the Arcanine is going to be a justified boosting Arcanine. Mainly because Arcanine and Whimsicott are common enough and Arcanine tends to run Intimidate. So your opponent kind of has to make a call there like is it Whimsicott Arcanine or is it just a, an Arcanine on the team? Uh, where Terrakion, Cobalion, Verizion, you already know what's going on there. Like you, you already know, you've known since team preview. You're, you're able to kind of catch him off guard in game one with uh, Arcanine, which is really cool. It has a really good attack set, 110. Has a really good speed tier for the format. Uh, so typically it's just another fast life orb attacker, but uh, the great coverage is what sells Arcanine on this. It's also pure fire types, an, an amazing typing to have. So that's, that's really nice for it. Lucario. I don't really find this one to be all that great. Bullet punch, close combat, meteor mash, protect. Uh, there isn't anything too special about it. Like it's... Here's the thing, um, it's fast, or it's it's stronger than Cobalion, I will give it that, however, overall, I feel that Cobalion's a better choice, simply because of the speed tier. There are a lot of Pokemon in the format that are faster than 90 base speed, and if you have a Tailwinder on, on your team, uh, it isn't too hard to beat a fast Tailwind Lucario that just got beat up boosted, because you can outspeed it with like your own Arcanine, Dynamax, and KO it under Tailwind, so like, if, if you're faster than base 90 with your own Pokemon and you can just set up a Tailwind, you're, you're going to be outspeeding this Lucario anyways and it just won't be able to do as much. So if you're going to be a justified Pokemon, I would say I would say Arcanine is like the baseline speed you should have to be a ser like a serious threat. So I, I don't find Lucario all that great on justified teams. Um, I just think that if you're going to run Lucario, run like Inner Focus, be scary in the fact that you can't be intimidated. And yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> um, Gallade is another one of these that I don't think is very good. It's base 80 speed, which is even worse than Lucario's base 90. Uh, not that 90 is bad, it's just for this particular strategy, it's it's pretty underwhelming. Gallade has okay coverage, I guess. I mean, it gets access to things like Ice Punch, it gets um, Close Combat, Zen Headbutt. Uh, I just, once again, it, it's very hard to justify, no pun intended, using Gallade over any one of these other fighting types. <laughs> even Arcanine does better than it. Um, like, just to do the strategy, so I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, Gallade is one of these Pokemon that you have to deal with. Next up, you have the beat-up users, and only, like, two of these are known for using beat-up. I'm going to try to get Feeble to start using beat-up, um, and these two are pretty uncommon, but I should always just cover my bases. So Whimsicott, the most notorious of these, the reason being is they tend to run max speed, either max HP or max special attack, it's kind of preferential. Um, Focus Sash, beat-up, Tailwind, Protect, Moonblast. And what they do is turn one, they protect, so you don't get... It, it, it depends. If you have a fake out Pokemon, they protect. Uh, and then, if you don't, I guess they would just set up Tailwind turn one, and the partner Pokemon would protect to make sure they don't take any damage. And because they're faster and everything, and they have the Focus Sash, which allowed them to survive that turn one, uh, they're able to go for beat up on their partner, giving them plus four, and at that point, their job's pretty much done. Like, they have served their purpose, they just made a god of Alterachion standing next to them. Like, they, they essentially built a Hercules from the ground up. <laughs> so you can get rid of that Whimsicott, it's fine. And that, that's that's really all Whimsicott has to offer. It has a good coverage, I guess, when you combine it with Terrakion. You have Stab Rock, you have Stab um, Fighting, you have Stab Fairy, you have Stab Grass. So these two together pair extremely well in that sense, but I, I just personally feel that Whimsicott is the best option for setting it up, but it's also the most obvious option. Sometimes you can catch people off guard with some of our other ones here. Dragapult uh, is one of the scarier beat-up partners, mainly because it's hard to identify in Team Preview if it's going to be a beat-up Dragapult, and also because Dragapult is actively a threat. Like, it, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't just have to be the beat-up Pokemon. I mean, like, it could be like a Life Orb attacker, even though, I mean, even though I said you could run like a Life Orb in the other ones, the other ones might be running something like a Lumberry, but Dragapult can be like a Life Orb attacker with beat up as just like a tech option next to it like like you could be running a full offensive dragapult with dragon darts with phantom force etc uh so i believe dragapult is one of the cooler options just because of that it's harder to identify it's very fast and it's actively a threat in the field Feevil is personally one of my favorite pokemon in the format for some reason people just won't pick it up it has the ability unburden so if you run this thing with like a psychic seed uh you have the option to run a lot of support moves like snarl like foul play like beat up uh, like Howl, but I guess for this one you can run Beat Up, and you even get like Knock Off and stuff. So it's it's a really seriously interesting Pokemon that people should check out. Uh, if you're using a Size Spam team, definitely run it next to Indeedee. Um, but with base 90 speed, uh, it isn't that fast comparatively to these other options. However, 
uh, once you get that Unburden boost, you're able to actually go for uh, beat up on your partner Pokemon. And here's actually a really, really cool strategy that I, I was able to use successfully on another team of mine. Indeedy. You run a male or female Indeedy, doesn't matter, I prefer male for this strategy, with Psychic Surge. What's going to happen is, you lead off Feeble and Indeedy, Indeedy sets up Psychic Surge, Feeble gets a Psychic Seed, you're staring down a Dark-type Pokemon usually because they see an Ndidi, and what are they going to do? They're going to hit the Ndidi with a Dark-type move. You can immediately switch out that Ndidi for your own Justified Pokemon, you can switch it in for like a Terrakion or something, and that very same turn that you beat up your own Terrakion on the switch in, you will likely take a Dark-type move, making that <laughs> making that uh, Terrakion go to plus 5 instead of plus 4, which is extremely threatening. So yeah, Thievul, nothing to sleep on, definitely try it out, it has a lot of cool coverage moves. Alolan Persian is an interesting one. Uh, you don't really see it too much, however, it's one of the bulkier options with the ability Fur Coat. Basically, your defense is doubled. Typical spread looks like this. <laughs> um, it's, it's a fast Pokemon. It has base 115 speed, has access to a lot of cool moves, Fake Out, Snarl, Beat Up, Foul Play. Uh, it's pretty similar to, like, Liopard. I guess I should have included Liopard uh, to Liopard and Thievul and what it wants to run as a moveset. However, uh, Persian has the advantage of being much more defensive with its uh, fur coat ability. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. It also just has Fake Out over Thievul, which is really cool. Finally, I'm going to be talking about Weavile. Weavile is not really one you want to run. <laughs> I just don't find it all that good. Like, you run Focus Sash, I guess. Fake Out, Triple Axel. Beat Up as one of your moves. But, I mean, I feel like you'd get a lot further running a Beat Up team with any one of these other options. So I don't recommend Weavile. It also doesn't have very good defensive synergy with any of the Swords of Justice since they're all weak to fighting pretty much, except for Virizion, but you get my drift. So that is how you would, that, that is just breaking down how these beat up teams work, right? Now I want to get into how you can beat these beat up teams. Beat squared up. <laughs> that was such a stupid math joke. Um, basically beat up teams have issues against fake out. While I mean, the only way to really stop a fake out from breaking the sash on the Whimsicott is by the Whimsicott going for Protect, and they don't always want to do that. So if you can identify, hey, they didn't have Protect, like game one or two, uh, you're able to go for a fake out into that Whimsicott, doubling into it with a partner Pokemon, uh, and you'll be able to stop that fake out. You'll be able to stop the, the beat up entirely if you can just remove the Whimsicott before Tailwind goes up, because they almost always go for Tailwind. So doubling into Whimsicott, sometimes sacking a Pokemon is a good play. You have to sort of gauge your losses there. It's really interesting. Uh, situation you put yourself in. Um, but yeah, I think Incineroar is one of the best options for this because not only does Incineroar get Fake Out to threaten the Whimsicott turn one, breaking its stash, allowing you to remove it the next turn, uh, but it's also a fire type with Intimidate. So you can Fake Out the Whimsicott turn one, you Intimidate the Terrakion uh, as you come in so it won't be able to one-shot you, and that very next turn you have the option of going for something like Flare Blitz into the Whimsicott as it tries to set up the Tailwind, um, and it's just really, really solid. It, it's just like a great Pokemon, and the fact that it has Intimidate means it can switch in and out. It also gets Parting Shot, which is great for dealing with uh, the Terrakion, because barring barring them going for a Max Knuckle, once they have their beat up boost, they're usually not going to be boosting much more than that. Rillaboom is a very interesting way of dealing with it. I feel like if Rillaboom wasn't in this format, um, beat up Justified Terrakion would be a bigger issue. Like a lot more people would be have trouble would be having trouble with it. And the main reason Rillaboom does really well versus it is because not only does it get Fake Out to disrupt that Tailwind turn to uh, threaten the Whimsicott Sash, but it also gets access to a new move called Grassy Glide while it sets up Grassy Surge for itself. Grassy Glide is a priority move uh, that gets... It, like, it only gets priority when it's in grassy terrain. So, because one of the most... What, because the most notorious beat-up justified Pokemon is Terrakion, you can actually do significant amounts of damage to Terrakion with Grassy Glide. So... While they will be able to attack and be faster, they will at the very least be taking somewhere around like 80% of their health, or if they're Dynamaxed, it's it's still a significant chunk. So that's that's a really great way of dealing with it, especially if you slap like a Miracle Seed onto this Pokemon. It's able to deal massive damage to Terrakion. Arcanine is just generally a good way of dealing with it because it's an Intimidate Pokemon, it's bulky, uh, and also it gets access to Will-O-Wisp, so if you dare go for a Will-O-Wisp as your way of dealing with um, the Terrakion beat-up strategy, you can permanently neuter the Terrakion or any other Pokemon on the other side of the field barring Arcanine. Oh, that's another point for Justified Arcanine, it can't be burned, which is really big. Uh, but yeah, it's just a very nice Pokemon to deal with uh, threats like that. Corviknight, I believe, is a decent pick for dealing with Terrakion in particular, uh, because it's a very physically defensive Pokemon. If you Dynamax this thing, you can start setting up max steel spikes while dealing damage to the Terrakion. 
uh, and you won't be one shot by anything if you Dynamax, which is really really nice. I just I feel as though um, Corviknight is a, is a decent pick in this format just because of how well it's able to deal with Terrakion. It also gets access to Body Press, so you could run something along the lines of um, Iron Head, Body Press, Roost, I guess Tailwind if you wanted to, Brave Bird. But the fact of the matter is, it's able to soak up hits, recover a little bit with like leftovers. Uh, and just deal massive damage to this Terrakion before it's even able to pick up a KO. Conkeldur is a great way of dealing with a lot of these, uh, especially Cobalion and uh, Terrakion, and that's because it gets Mach Punch and it's a very physically defensive Pokemon. So you can Dynamax your Conkeldur and take whatever hit you need to from this Terrakion, hit him with a very powerful uh, Max Knuckle, boosting your attack. You could even run like an Iron Fist set. Um, and if you aren't Dynamaxed, if you find yourself in a position where like, okay, my Rillaboom did a lot of damage with Grassy Glide, uh, you should be able to go for a Mach Punch and get the KO just because of how powerful uh, Mach Punch coming out from Conkeldur is, so yeah. And I'm going to throw in a Zumro here, uh, mainly just because it's the strongest Aqua Jet user we have, and it resists fighting moves from uh, Terrakion, and it's naturally bulky, so you can Dynamax this thing to help deal with it. It doesn't do well versus uh, Whimsicott, same to Conkeldur, I guess, uh, because Whimsicott's a fairy type, uh, but Usually they don't run Grass Stab on these sort of teams, they usually decide to run Beat Up over something like Energy Ball or Giga Drain, so Azumarill is usually a pretty good way of handling that. So those are like the ways of just overall disrupting it and answering it once the Beat Up has gone up, I guess. Uh, however, there are a few options in stopping the Beat Up, and here are a few. I'm going to save Clefable for a minute here and talk about the better ones. So. Clefairy, uh, you're able to actually use redirection to stop this beat up because the beat up, instead of going into the partner Terrakion or whatever justified Pokemon is there, uh, will go into your Pokemon going for this move. So if you go for Follow Me, something like an Eviolite -like Clefairy with Friend Guard, which is a pretty common set if you guys don't know. Sometimes I get comments like, why are you running Clefairy? Clefable exists. I'm like, it's got Eviolite, it's bulkier, it has this really cool ability, try it out. <laughs> it's common knowledge. Um, you can run like a physically defensive Clefairy, excuse that for attack, what am I doing? Uh, you can run like a physically defensive Clefairy, you can run something like Icy Wind, Follow Me, etc. And it, it's just extremely good support for stopping that from going up in the first place. Uh, and I, I highly recommend that you have redirection on your team, on pretty much every team. I feel like every team needs some kind of redirection to deal with things in the format. So, another one, Togekiss. Togekiss uh, will get one shot by Max Rockfall, is the downside. There's no way you're living that with this hit, or with this Pokemon. Uh, so, yeah, Follow Me, it's just a solid option. Indeedee is a pretty decent option. Uh, it gets Psychic Surge, and it also has access to Expanding Force. So if you wanted to, you could sort of feign a Follow Me, like maybe they won't even go for the beat up, and you can just Expanding Force to knock out their Pokemon, because uh, most of these uh, Justified users are actually going to be weak to Psychic moves, so that's really nice for Indeedee. Uh, but overall, just Follow Me shenanigans again, that's another option. Amoongus and Volcarona, these are actually two interesting options, and the reason being, uh, Whimsicott can't be redirected by Rage Powder because it's Grass type, it's immune to all Powder moves, and that includes Rage Powder. Amoongus and Volcarona would really only be able to deal with, um, to, with would only be able to deal with beat up Terrakion if the beat up user was not Whimsicott. So if you're facing like a Dragapult beat up strategy, you'll be able to redirect with Amoongus and Volcarona using Rage Powder. Um, however. If you do find yourself in a situation where your only redirection Pokemon is Amoongus and you're facing down beat up Terrakion, you do have the option of running a pretty physically defensive Amoongus with Clear Smog or Spore, because Sleep is a great way of dealing with it. If you manage to get into a position where you're able to go for a Spore into that Terrakion, or at the very least a Clear Smog, you're able to reset the board in a way and just sort of stop them from being able to sweep your team. So Amoongus is a great option in that sense. Uh, and the final one that I want to put out there, you got Unaware Clefable here. This is just sort of a meme option, but it's kind of funny. Physically defensive, unaware Clefable. Like, it doesn't even care that the boost went up. It literally ignores the fact that this thing's at plus 4 attack, if not plus 6 at that point. And it can follow me away all the hits, recover with like a berry or leftovers. Um, and yeah, it's just overall a pretty decent way of dealing with it. If you're that concerned, you can run unaware, follow me Clefable. And it's not common. I wouldn't recommend it. I feel like Clefairy is overall better, but if you're that concerned, you do have this option. In fact, in 2017, when um, when Mimikyu and Snorlax were just starting to pick up usage, I ended up running Follow Me Unaware Clefable because it was able to get three shot by uh, Snorlax because it just ignored the Belly Drum boost. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on how to beat this particular sort of build of team. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did you find it helpful? Did you learn anything about beat up justified strategies? Sorry if it was hard to follow. I'm just sort of speaking off the cuff here because I didn't think this was worthy of writing a, a whole script. Uh, but yeah, 
leave a like if you enjoyed. I really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.